Hello, my name is Angela and this is my friend Sharon. And we'd like to welcome you to the Blackstone River and Canal Heritage Park located here at 237 Oak Street in Uxbridge, Massachusetts, which is about 25 minutes south of Worcester. You've been following the history of the Blackstone Canal from its beginning in 1828 to its closing in 1848. Well, today we are going to actually show you one of the remaining sections of the canal that is still intact that can be visited here in Oxbridge up close and personal. Great. Okay, so such a beautiful day today. We're going to take a look at the north end of the canal, if you would, with me. And you can see that the canal is not very wide. And it depends on what spot you're in, but it's about 32 feet wide in certain spots and three and a half to four feet deep. Now, of course, that's not very deep, so you certainly couldn't put like a luxury liner on the canal. They had to use certain boats, certain size boats. As the boats went along the canal, from Worcester to Providence and Providence to Worcester for the 45 mile trip, the elevation of the land changed quite a bit. Uh, probably about 500 feet difference. So they used what they call locks and there were 49 locks in the canal. That's a lot of locks for 45 miles, but it was needed and necessary so that the boats could a a accommodate the water levels. So a lock, think of, I guess, an elevator. So if the boat need needed to be raised up, it would go into the lock the water would come up, raise the boat up, and the boat would go along the way. If the boat needed to be moved down to accommodate the water level, the boat would go into the lock, they'd take the water out, and the boat would move along the way. Now, it's my understanding, and I know it's here because Angie and I have seen it before, along the way down the north end, you will see the Goat Hill Lock, which is still here today. So if you come to, to the park, you might want to come and take a look at the Goat Hill Lock. Please join us as we walk south down the towpath toward Providence. Um, the towpath was actually where the horses walked along. It just ran parallel with the canal. And two horses pulled the boats the 45 mile length from Worcester to Providence and back from Providence to Worcester. Those horses pulled those boats the entire time? Actually, no, Cher. Oh. Every 12 miles, the horses were changed up because, of course, they were tired and they needed to be fed. So, farm children, sometimes as young as 9 and 10, would bring down the two, two horses who had been fed and who had been rested and change them up. And they would bring the tired, uh, fit the tired hungry horses back up to the farm so they could rest and so they could be fed. In those days, everyone worked on the farm, no matter what age you were. So the towpath, Ange, yes. T-O-W, right? Yes. Instead T -O -W, of T-O-A? T-O-W, yeah, which means, of course, push. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I remember seeing something at the Worcester Historical Museum, and it was a mile marker. Mm -hmm. And I know that they had mile markers along the way so that the captains would be able to tell how far they had gone. Mile marker kind of was etched in this big stone and it was, well, the stone kind of looked like uh, something you'd see at a cemetery, like a tombstone. So that mile marker 24 must have been just about it. The one that you can view at the museum must be just about the halfway mark um, from Worcester to Providence or Providence to Worcester. Right, about 45 miles, that's what it was. Sure, yeah, that mile marker would be considered an artifact. Oh yes, because an artifact is something that's old, uh, man-made, and really tells a story, and that definitely would tell a story because they say that that mile marker, or at least one mile marker, is hidden here in the brush, the overgrown brush of almost 200 years. Remember, you and I tried to find that mile marker, but in the brush, we were a little nervous. Can you imagine the excitement in Worcester almost 200 years ago 
um, when the first boat came from Providence yeah. yep. to Worcester um, on October 7th, 1828. The first boat was named, by the way, the Lady Carrington. And the reason it was named the Lady Carrington was because the Carrington family, who was a very well-to-do family in Providence, bought a lot of shares because that's how they actually um, got the money to pay for it. Yeah. So the Carringtons must have been a family who probably bought a lot of shares, so they named the first boat that came down from Providence the Lady Carrington. Well, on October 7th, 1828, the, the route of the canal were probably filled with people cheering on this historic event. And as it got to Worcester, nice. there were cannons roaring, there were uh, bands playing, there were fireworks, some prominent people made some speeches as the boat um, got to Worcester. But I thought those boats only carried goods. Well, this was the one passenger boat. This Lady uh, Carrington was the one passenger boat. And of course, on that day in 1828, there were just passengers that were coming down probably to Worcester, probably most of the Carrington family, I would imagine. But there were also 12 freight boats that were on oh, the okay. fleet that carried the goods back and forth to Worcester. Now, I understand that there was a very famous man, Isaiah Thomas, that was there that day. Is that true? Editor of the Massachusetts Spy. And he made a speech to welcome the boat. Can you imagine the great headline that he had and pictures for his newspaper that next day? Great. You know, Ange, history records the past. And here we are in the present at this beautiful place, the canal, and that we have history all around us. It's just amazing. Today, this park is used for kayaking, uh, trail walking, biking, picnicking. It's just a beautiful place to come, a beautiful place for families to come, um, I would say during the spring and the summer, perhaps not in the winter. Um, as we are here today, but it is actually a beautiful day.